Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Salt Lake City Review. Now, I want to say this. If anyone managed to see my last review, I said clearly things should have been done differently. For the simple fact, AJ leaving with the title last week just was not impactful enough. It would have been impactful on your biggest show of the year, Bound for Glory. For him to say they leave a couple of minutes extra or go over the three hour period and let Dixie try to buy him off and he say, fuck you, I'm gone, drives away with the car. They could have set that up during Bound for Glory, but they didn't do it. They did this the night after Bound for Glory. In other words, they do it that next Thursday night. And I felt it was wrong. Look, WWE did it right. When it came for CM Punk to walk out with that title, I know it may sound like a bite off of WWE. And in a sense, it was. But it would have worked. Seeing it the next night wasn't right. It just didn't feel right for me personally. It would have been better on the pay-per-view because it would have been more impactful like this would have been more impactful. The beginning of the show with Dixie showing those long legs but not being very steady in the ring with those very thin high heels. There's women that can pull them off easily and there's women that can't. And Dixie looked like she was about to fall on her ass in the ring. She just ain't good with heels in the ring. Let's get to it simply. She said there's going to be eight men who's going to have a tournament in the next couple of weeks. And these eight men will go through this tournament to become the new TNA champion. AJ, go off with my car. Go off with my title. I don't give a damn. Really. I heard what it costs to get one of those titles made up. From, look, when the wonderful, the glorious, the, the natural Ric Flair. And he had his world title originally. The NWA world title. That sucker was about thirty to forty thousand dollars made. That was a thirty forty thousand dollar belt. Who actually buys this woman, letting him drive away with a fifty to a forty thousand dollar car? Maybe say about forty or thirty thousand, and then a thirty thousand dollar belt. It's bullshit. They don't buy it. So, going back to the tournament is a good idea, as I said. The Dixie Carter um, Inventational that could have been done for the World Championship, she did it her way fine. But I would have felt better if it was last week because it would have been more impactful. So what did we get? We got Samoa Joe. We got Austin Aries. We got Jeff Hardy. We got Sabin. We got who else? Rude. We got... Uh... Who was the last couple of people? I kind of lost track. Storm. And who else was there? Mm. As well as Angle. I think it was Angle. Wasn't it Angle? Yeah. Kurt Angle. Sorry. It's just I'm thinking about how to explain what happened with Kurt Angle and Robert Roode later. But having those eight men there was understandable. Good. So at the end of it, what did we get? We got Bully Ray coming out getting mad. Then Mr. Anderson coming out and kicking his ass. This is part of the feud. I said it was going to happen months upon months ago. The only thing there is what was added later. Because of what... Who decided that Bischoff should talk? But it was necessary for the storyline. Bischoff saying he can't stand what's going on simply. And then you have... Mike Knox saying, hey, what are you doing? I got a match to do. You can see there's about to be a division. Mike Knox is going to be with Bully Ray. And Bischoff is going to go with Anderson. If they don't do it, it's going to be kind of stupid. Because they need to have a split with in Aces and Eights. Two on two. It makes sense. Do I want it? No. I was hoping this was finally over and it would be destroyed. But they're still going with it. Now... To go on to the gauntlet match. Hearing that Sting had a shot. To have the band lifted. Because of this match. Eh. Wasn't bad. The only reason I'm going is eh. 
is because when you see this, I would have wanted bromance to be put into the gauntlet match instead of bad influence dealing with Joseph Park and Eric Young. Now, when you see the gauntlet match and you see Sting dealing with everybody else, including Maddox, Eric Young, bad influence, who I wish was not included in this situation. In the end, we get Magnus winning the match by throwing a Sting and Kaz out. I didn't have a problem with that. I am so happy they're doing something with Magnus. Believe me, I love what they're doing with Magnus. But what is pissing me off is I'd rather see bromance in that situation where they can job. Look, I don't hate bromance. I don't love them either. I'm not saying they didn't do a great job at Bound for Glory. They actually did for them. They did a very good job at Bound for Glory. But now when you see how bad influence, who is the best tag team they have, dealing with the Abyss character pisses me off. I thought it was going to be bromance dealing with Abyss. They have bad influence dealing with Abyss. Why? When you see the segment with the wonderful and glorious Francois and Daniels. I love seeing them as oh, Sherlock Holmes and Mr. Watson. I loved it. I enjoyed it until Eric Young came out and it was over. Because I knew that the Abyss was going to come out. It was obvious. And still, he does not come out with the TNA television title. Why do you still have him on your website if he's not even carrying the title, TNA? That pisses me off. He destroys those two who doesn't deserve to be destroyed. And in the end, he helps up a Joseph Park. I said this months ago. The Abyss is going to turn from Jekyll to Hyde. And Joseph Park is going to need an Eric Young to be the catalyst similar to what happened to... Kane and RVD, when Kane took off the mask, and RVD was there to look at it. It's coming. In some form or fashion, it's going to happen. But why does... Why couldn't Bad Influence be in the match that Bromance and Storm and Gunner was at? And I'm going to get to that right now. Storm and Gunner versus Bromance. And it wasn't a bad match, but in the end, Bromance wins. Now... Is this good storytelling? No. Am I interested in bromance? No. There's no Mr. Olympia. There's no backstage spectrums with them. It is basically boring. They did one at Bound for Glory and then one at, I think, last week. And that's it. Done. The tag titles are completely empty right now because there's nothing going on. And I'm moving on to the ODV versus Gail Kim. Now that match was all about Tappa. Yes, she had a very limited, very, very limited amount of need, needing, well, how can I explain needing? She didn't do much. She wasn't needed very much because it was Gail Kim who did most of the job. But still Tappa is being presented. And I said this before, Tappa is too green to do it on her own. She needs to stay with Gail Kim no matter how much you may not like Gail Kim. You think she's a botch fest. You think she talks like crap. You think that she's too much of a glory hog. It makes no difference. Tappa needs exposure but doesn't need to talk. She needs to be with someone who can talk well enough to get themselves over and to present Tappa. And that's the reason why she's there. Gail Kim wins, Tappa's one is presented, and I'm fine with it right now. What I'm very happy to see was EC3 and Norman, what was it? <laughs> Norman what? Norman, uh, Browse, Br I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. Norm! I'm calling him Norm. It was great to see Norm again. And I loved the match. He's a good talent. He may be skinny as hell, but he can still go around the ring and enhance whoever he needs to enhance. I have to admit, it would have been good to have a third jobber. Not two, three separate jobbers to do the work. But Tina is on a tight budget, so they have to repeat one. What does this mean? Ethan Carter III looks good. And I'm glad, at least until he had his time to talk, and the stupid music was playing over his voice. TNA, how long have you been online? 
How long have you been on television? What the fuck? You should have turned his music off, let him speak, and then turned his music back on. What the fuck was that? That was total amateurish. That was all H. Early years. And somewhat now. That was just sloppy. But it was what it was. Now. The. Hmm. Let me put it to you like this. The final match of the night. Well, there was barely any matches here. Barely anything. Rude versus Angle. What did we get? We got a good match. Once again, like a Bound for Glory match. It was very good. But the finisher, what does it leave you? Because you should see what I say in the title. Angle down. What now? What does this mean? Kurt Angle acting like he is having a severe concussion. Possibly having some type of nerve damage. Something's going wrong. But what does this mean? Does this mean Kurt Angle is leaving TNA to go to WWE? I don't know and I'm not checking the dirt sheets. Does this mean this is still a possible road of redemption? Yes, it does. Does this mean that, as I said a long time ago, Kurt Angle should not have come back so soon. He should have taken a year off to give himself some time to clean himself up, to give the, the crowd time to basically not really think about him for a little while and what he did with his drinking and just... Leave it for a while, let him come back, and then go back to where he was. That could be another one. Then there's the last one. Admitting what's wrong with him. Like with Jeff Hardy when he talked about his drug addiction. Not essentially saying it, but everyone played it up in 2011 going to 2012. They said it clearly. You've done what you've done. I made the similar mistake. Like with a Matt Morgan saying, I was on pain pills for quite a while, but I straightened myself out. I'm giving you this chance, bro. I know you can make it come back, but if you don't, I'm going to bury your ass. This could be a Kurt Angle actually admitting he was a basically alcoholic. They just couldn't outright say it. They have to play it out. This could be that as well. My guess is if this is it, that he is acting like this because of his drinking. Supposed to drinking and now they're gonna actually play it up This would be the way to do it If you look on the website for the scenes after the show when they put him in a chair and he's got spit running down his mouth Saying what happened? What? What's going on? They said you got knocked out again If they're going by the concussion angle, it's crap But if they go by the drinking angle, it actually would give them more momentum to bring him back more stronger how do I feel about this show? It's good that they're doing this tournament. I wish they'd done it a week before. They're really kind of behind in my perception, but I really am glad they are doing it. Seeing bad influence in this position with Joseph Park does not feel me good. I don't want to see them have to, they got great material and they have to deal with Abyss and Joseph Park and Eric Young. I don't want to see this. I don't. ODB has the nice boobies, but it's not enough to get my interest. To be honest, this wasn't a very great show, even though good things were done in it. I'm giving this a C plus for the simple fact what happened with the tag titles, what's going on with Kurt Angle, I'm not sure. You guys tell me that I should give a much better view of this. I'm sure the ratings went up, but like I always say, short term gain long-term loss if there's no direct direction. I'm hoping I'm wrong and there's a very good direction going into Genesis. So I hope you enjoyed the Zane view and subscribe and comment to my channel. Sorry, subscribe and comment to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. I've had a lot on my mind. It's not bad things that's going on in my life right now, but very hectic. And I admit it's very, very stressful right now. So I'm doing the best I can to get my videos out and to make sure they're not too late. Have a good evening.